Hi, welcome to the Andram Cam. I'm your host, Elena Bracken. With me here today is... John Hoyle. <laughs> <laughs> he is a teacher, a director, an actor, and an award-winning writer. <laughs> Hi, John. <laughs> Hello. So, you are putting on... I am putting on Jumpers for Goalposts, which is um, a play about a gay football team who are particularly rubbish. Um, but it's not really a play about football. It's a play about the relationships um, of, between the characters who are part of the team. Uh, and there is a lot of laughter in it. Okay, so it's full-on comedy. No. No. Uh, no, I wouldn't suggest <laughs> it was full-on comedy. Um it's definitely a drama with funny bits in. Okay. So rather, like, rather than out and out. It's quite, it's quite tender and there are lots of touchy moments in it. There are stories of youthful characters who are learning how to be in relationships. There are older characters who've lost loved, loved ones and uh, oh. coming to terms with the loss of a relationship. So, so it's, a, it's about how people interact at different stages in their life. I like that. <laughs> so, like, when the audience go away after coming watching it, what do you want them to feel? What's the key message that you want them to go away, either having learnt something or feeling something for you? What is that? Well, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure they're necessarily going to learn anything. No. Um, but they, I hope that they love those characters um, as we present them to them. Um, and judging by, we've had one rehearsal, and judging by the quality of the actors. And what they're bringing to the parts, I hope that the, the the characters feel very real, and that they form some attachments to them, and go go away thinking about them after after the the curtains go down, as it were. Okay, so in terms of characters, like tell me a little bit more, delve in a little bit more for me. So All right, we, we have two very youthful um, characters who are awkwardly trying to get together, um, although none of them have the the, the the bravery or the courage to say it to one another um, for different reasons which we explore um, throughout the play. But to say too much would be to give too much away. Oh, okay. um, and we have a, a lesbian pub owner who is running this team and she thinks they're all dreadful and she's very aggressive about this. But she's just lost her sister um, whose husband is the only straight man on the team. They, they, they refer to him as a token straight man. Okay. Uh, and he's on the team as a, as a, she's trying to bring him out of his uh, grief, essentially, and, okay. he, and heal him. Um, but he doesn't feel like he really needs healing. Uh, so the, so there's, a, there's a bit of conflict uh, there. There is another aspirational busker who really wants to be the centre of Hull gay pride okay. with his busking songs okay. uh, he, he has a little journey throughout as well so like in terms of the lgbtq plus like that whole that's quite prominent in this play isn't it uh yeah um but but it's 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 almost uh it, it's not a flag waving play it's it, it's a play about five people um who happen to be gay um it, it and it, it was written in 2013 mm -hmm. um but it's, it's, it certainly doesn't feel like a, a, a showy play. The, the, the characters um, are truthful enough that you, you just accept them, no matter what their sexuality is. I, would, I wouldn't well, necessarily... I there, are, there are some uh, fundamentally gay storylines in it. Um, but I, I don't think this play is a play about shining a light on gay culture. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a play, a realist play, really. I think we need that, because I think... A lot of the times, especially when you come into amateur dramatics, sometimes they can get a little bit uh, stagnant and stuck in their ways. So I think uh, a play like this, where it's just these are just they're just people who just yeah. happen to be gay. It's like yeah, I mean, amateur amateur drama is essentially a middle class pursuit, isn't it? Mm. And most of the people who work in amateur societies are white. And of a, of, an, of a certain age. But the, the good thing about Playhouse too is that it em embraces people. And I know that uh, Steve Bennett, the artistic director, is very keen to get to drag people in, essentially. Why do you think that is? Why do you think... Because I have noticed that, that there's a, a severe kind of lack of, of culture. There's a lack of, like, a mix of colours and races and backgrounds. It is very, quite stagnant again. Um, 
Well, it's tricky, isn't it? Because uh, I, w- I was working with uh, a Bangladeshi teaching assistant, and she said, I would love to be an actor. I would love to get, get on a stage and do some bits. And I said, well, you should come to our theatre and join in, and we'll, we'll find parts for you, and you, you can get involved. And she said, will I be the only person there who's from Bangladesh? And that, that was a big, well, no, I'm not coming then. Right. Um, so we're in a catch-22 situation, really. You invite people to come and, 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 and enjoy it, but if it doesn't feel like it's it's their thing, um, then you're going to turn them away, aren't you? However, I do think the, the Playhouse 2, in my experience of, of local amateur theatres, is possibly the, the most welcoming. I agree, um, it's very warm. And we get lots of new young actors. Two two of the boys in this, have, 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 one of, two of them are brand new to the theatre, mm-hmm. Um, and one of them's been here since last year, and he he was in Calendar Girls. He was in The Good Life, and uh, this this is his biggest part. And he's he's really, you can see him sort of blossoming. Yeah. And um, the thing is with it with amateur drama, everyone has to start somewhere, don't they? Yes. So you're getting people involved who are not necessarily trained uh, and have sometimes no experience at all. But what happens is they get good at it and um, they learn on the job. So you have to you you have to come to a, an amateur drama um, performance on the understanding that, that this is a functioning society. You're not seeing professional theatre. Um, sometimes, arguably, the standards can be better because yes. pe- people do it for the love rather than um, being paid, and certainly better than um, poor professional theatre or even average professional th- theatre sometimes um, because of lots of various uh, economic issues. But the, 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 there is always a place for, for those actors who are coming through, who are going to get better and are going to be leading the place in 20 years, 30 years. Yeah, and I mean, arguably, this interview, interview could be an opportunity to invite those people who wouldn't usually come to this kind of a community, who wouldn't usually reach out. Yeah, absolutely, kind of absolutely. Like, you're... You're welcome, 100% you're yes, welcome. Yes, yes. Anybody, any race, any background. I know the, the Playhouse do um, regular dares for new people to come in and join in. And there are, one, one of the problems is people often leave those those um, meetings and they, they won't hear from us for a, a few months okay. um, because the parts in the, in the next uh, year or so are all booked up because they, they, they need to be. Um, but they can definitely get involved in other areas mm-hmm. um, and people drop out of stuff. So if you show your face and, and you get involved backstage and do things, um, you've definitely got more of a chance of being asked to, to to come and be in something. I started here when I was 14, I think. Right. I wrote to... And how old are you now, John? I'm 38. <laughs> <laughs> you've been here a while. Yeah. yeah, I used to tell people oh, I've been here about 15 years and then slowly it became 20 and now it's a bit more than that. Yeah. It's frightening. But um, I, I came as a teenager and a rather lonely one. Um, my school was quite far away from where I lived so I didn't have a sort of community of mates. Um, and I was really interested in theatre so I wrote to all the theatres in the area and said, can you give me some work experience? And uh, Barry Cottam, uh, who was the, the old artistic director, invited me and said, your letter was so nice, I thought you should come down. Mm-hmm. And I was building sets and things um, when I first got here. And within about six months, I was in something. And then I had a string of lovely parts after that. Yeah, you know what? I think that's one of the best things about amateur dramatics is that you can dabble in everything. You yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Directing, writing, working backstage, doing the costumes. You have an opportunity to figure out what you like. Yeah, absolutely, and th- and then w- when you've got those experiences, so, I, so I've done I've done tech and things, that then you end you end up with a bank of knowledge which enables you to direct something like this. Yeah, it's, okay. So speaking of you as director, are you a mean <laughs> director? <Are> you, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. What's your what's your process with the cast? Do you think that you're collaborative? Do you listen to um, like a, I heard that conversation between you and a cast member talking about things like uh, costume and styling and stuff like that? Are you open to their ideas or are you very much I have this vision this is how I want it um no I think the vision is comes comes from the scripts mm. really and your job as a director is to bring out what's in a script uh I, I'm quite interested in design so so um one of the one of my bugbears about amateur drama is that they always build extraordinary sets 
Well, extraordinary. And you get you get to play on them, and you and you get to have them for the weeks, which professionals don't. Um, but they they always sort of finish at the set. Once it's built, so this is this is set, for instance, in a, a changing room, a football a football changing room, and directors usually build the football changing room, and then that's it. But there's no design aspect to it, so I'm quite interested in how, how do we raise an, an ordinary football changing room to something else. So hopefully we're, we're going to have big blow-ups of um, famous football players. Uh, of all genders and races, um, up up above the uh, the flats, so that the experience becomes a theatrical one as well as, well as a, a, an exercise in realism. Um, but in, in t- I'm not very interested in costumes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Other people are more qualified to do that mm-hmm. uh, than I am, and have better ideas. Uh, so what happens on stage it, is your vision? Well, it's, it's always script-led. So it's how, how can you make that moment in the script the best that it can be? So how can, how can you make um, you know, a moment between two characters fizzle? What, what is it about the, what's going on around the outside of that moment that will, that will sharpen it? Um, it's putting black against white, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really interested in bringing out the best of a script. So if... if that's funny, but can it be funnier? Mm-hmm. Um, that bit's really touching. How can we make it the most touching moment that it can be? Um, and really exploring the script as text. Um, you tend to get lots of people who can't actually read in amateur drama. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't say that in a patronising way, but you, you get people who can, of course, read um, every word, mm-hmm. but they can't necessarily comprehend or ask those sorts of questions uh, that lead that lead you to the truth of of what, what a text is okay, telling so you. Okay, so like dissecting the lines, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. and that is that's what I am very keen on as okay. as a director. So the the things that I direct tend to be uh, text heavy stuff. So almost the literature and the psychology behind why the words are what they are. Yes. Yes, in layman terms. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you have directed, acted, and you write. If yeah. you could pick one of those three things, <laughs> like which which do you love the most? Oh, that's really difficult. Um, well, wh- when I'm writing, I'm my own boss, mm-hmm. um, which is good and bad because there's no one to tell me t- to get on with it. Right. So I can I can I can be quite I can procrastinate, mm-hmm. and that right, writing like that comes with all all sorts of. Uh, what is it you write? Is it scripts? Is it novels? Um, I write generally stage plays because okay. i like to write stuff that's going to get made <laughs> and, uh, I, get that, I, yeah. I have an opportunity to make stuff yeah. um i've written stuff for the fringe uh which uh i've put on and been fairly successful with but i've, n- I've never really followed any of that up and perhaps i should um i love acting if there's a sort there's a part which enables me to show off okay <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. a bit be a bit be a bit more um you know push the walls of the text a bit more yeah uh something that's a bit uh, uh, something you a bit showcasey yeah, yeah 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 i kind of get that yeah okay final question <laughs> dream project amateur or otherwise what would that be oh god well uh, what i really want to do is uh create some sort of company that w- will take things around and that would be our job that's what i really want to do okay. and uh so so that the whole company are involved in some sort of writing and design and and acting so that we're all doing doing things okay uh, so you can do you know, it all you don't have to choose yeah absolutely yeah. um and to, to be able to do that all year round that would be the dream mm-hmm. um and work, working on pro- uh, passion projects for each of those people in the company would be um extraordinary love that okay John, do you want to just tell the audience where they can purchase tickets from? Uh, yes, um, Playhouse Two dot org, I think is, is the, the web, is the website, and there's a the book tickets uh, link on there. Yeah. So you're based in Shaw. We're based in Shaw. You can get them at a shop in Shaw as well. Okay, probably most people will probably buy online. I'd imagine that link will be in the bio. So jumpers <laughs> for Gold Post on at Playhouse Two in Shaw. Ladies and gentlemen, from the 24th of February, is it to the 2nd of March? Well, you've done better research than me. I have. I did. <laughs> I looked into it. 
<laughs> I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, thank, John, thank, thank you. you so much for coming on the show. You're um, welcome. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and like the video if you liked <laughs> John here. <laughs> thank you very much.